In this video, we will discuss how cancer cells are different from normal cells or what are the hallmarks of cancer. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. First of all, cancer is a disease caused by mutations. So the genome of tumor cells has a huge number of mutations including aneuploidy, deletions, translocations, amplifications and many more. The extent of the mutations is such that sometimes very large part of the chromosomes are shattered completely and they are rejoined, re-stitched again in a completely random manner. This whole phenomenon is called as chromothripsis. Secondly, cancer is a disease having uncontrolled cellular proliferation where the genes of cell cycle acceleration, the proto-oncogenes are not stopping because of gain of function mutations. On the other hand, the genes that stop the cell cycle called as tumor suppressors are not working because of loss of function mutations. One more thing these mutations are doing is disabling the pathways of cell death, making the cancer cells immune to cell death. Finally, the overexpression of enzyme telomerase makes the cancer cells immortal. So the second hallmark is uncontrolled cellular proliferation, evasion from cell death and immortalization. Here we will make an interesting observation. Since the cell cycle happening in cancer cells is abnormal without having any proper checking of the integrity of genome. That is why each round of cell cycle keeps piling up new mutations which further makes the second hallmark of uncontrolled cellular proliferation, evasion from cell death and immortalization stronger and stronger. The third hallmark of the tumor cells is they don't follow the rule of contact inhibition. That means they don't stop dividing when they come into contact with other cells like normal cells do. Normal cells follow contact inhibition because they want to create a properly structured tissue. But cancer cells neglect it completely to keep dividing, piling up and making tumors. Because of the huge number of mutations, tumor cells are synthesizing many faulty and misholded proteins, which alter the stress response of the cells. They start creating a lot of uh, heat shock proteins, protein folding proteins, proteasomes and so many other things. In the situation of very high proliferation, tumor cells need to synthesize a great number of macromolecules and to fulfill this demand, they rewire the metabolic path. One of the prominent examples is they route the glucose metabolism mainly toward glycolysis to produce energy and to use the glycolytic intermediates for macromolecular biosynthesis. This phenomenon is called as Warburg effect. So the fourth hallmark of cancer is altered metabolism and stress response. So yeah, cancer cells have uncontrolled proliferation and capacity to alter the metabolism. But they cannot go forever like this because they need nutrients that are going to come from blood. To fulfill this requirement, they develop the capability to recruit new blood vessels and this process is called as angiogenesis which is the next hallmark of cancer. Great, now blood is here. so. Other cells also have an invitation to enter into the tumor from the bloodstream. Cancer cells, immune cells and many other cells constitute the next hallmark of cancer that is tumor heterogeneity and formation of complex tumor microenvironment. This microenvironment contains so many cells other than cancer cells which help the tumor growth by secreting growth factors. One of the very special cell types present in tumors is cancer stem cells. They are very less in number but have amazing properties of drug resistance, immune evasion and most important of all that is capability to generate whole tumors. This complex tumor environment is a double-edged sword for a tumor because the incoming inflammatory cells can help the cell proliferation and tumor growth by secreting the growth factors but on the other side 
the cytotoxic T cells and natural killer cells can kill the cancer cells. To deal with this danger, tumor cells have the next hallmark, which is following various paths of immune evasion. One of the most important mechanisms is that the tumor microenvironment somehow manages to induce the expression of inhibitory receptors like PD-1, CTLA-4, TIM-3, and digits, etc., on T cells. In this situation, even if the T cells recognize the cancer cells, they cannot kill them because of functional inactivity. Finally, to be successful as a disease, cancer cells become malignant by using the process of metastasis. They leave the confinements of the local tissue and invade the nearby tissues to spread the tumors. One of the cellular mechanisms to achieve metastasis is called as epithelial mesenchymal transition or EMT where cancer cells lose their epithelial properties and gain mesenchymal properties to invade other tissues by entering into the blood vessels. So again, we are going to have an interesting observation here that angiogenesis is bringing some problematic immune cells but opening the path of metastasis while supplying the nutrition. Now let's summarize the hallmarks of cancer by listening to a short but beautiful story. Imagine there was a group of normal cells living their life peacefully. One day due to some mutations, they transformed themselves into cancer cells proliferating uncontrollably. These mutations gave those cells some extra perks like evasion from cell death, uncontrolled proliferation and gain of immortality. They started enjoying this new uninhibited lifestyle. No regulation could control them. No gene could stop their proliferation. They were just dividing and thriving. One day, cancer cells decided that they would not follow the rule of contact inhibition because they wanted to reach the pinnacle of tumor formation. But, 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 some problems started arising. To do this much higher rate of proliferation and tumor formation, cancer cells did not have enough building blocks. So they went to school of mutation and abrupt cell signaling to learn something. There they learned how to tweak the metabolism in their way and they were again thriving but good days did not last very long. Cancer cells had everything at their disposal, but they started feeling suffocated due to lack of oxygen and nutrients. So those devilish cells decided to invite the nearby blood vessels by secreting angiogenic factors to tackle their health problems. That was a great move because cancer cells started enjoying the perks of angiogenesis. This process of angiogenesis brought a few uninvited cells from the bloodstream which made the microenvironment very, very complex and the whole system became a heterogeneous personality. Cancer cells found a win in this also because many of these uninvited cells helped the tumor growth by secreting cytokines and growth factors. Soon, tumor cells realized that this complex microenvironment was a double-edged sword for them because few of these uninvited immune cells were cytotoxic and killers. But till now, the cancer cells have become so devil that they found the methods to evade this immune response and induce the expression of inhibitory receptors in the cytotoxic cells. Now, after winning nearly every battle, cancer cells were proud but not content. They decided to leave the territory and invaded nearby areas to bring chaos and death by using the mechanism of EMT and metastasis. They were successful in this conquest also, but they forgot that ultimately they are a disease and there is nothing to be proud of in being a disease. So guys, you have seen that all the hallmarks of cancer 
are associated with each other as well as to the success of cancer as a disease. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If yes, please like and subscribe. I have created a detailed introductory course on cancer biology which includes a detailed discussion of all these hallmarks. It contains separate sections on cancer as an infectious disease, oncogenes, tumor suppressor genes, abrupt signaling pathways, metastasis, different molecular mechanisms, therapeutics, and a few techniques related to cancer biology. If you wish to access this course, please write to me at bionerdcentral at gmail.com. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.